My man, welcome yeah. back. Thanks for having me. I think we me. should have a cocktail. What do you think? I agree. Your favorite? My go-to. All right. Let's do some 1942. Whoa, I'm the rock. Downtown is on fire. I know it is, and, and I want to say that um, that you have a lot to do with it. It's interesting because, you know, people always are like, you know, how did you get close to Bruce? How do you know Bruce? And I don't think people realize that your role within the family of companies has evolved over time. It has. And that when you guys first started buying a couple buildings down here, um, you were actually on the leasing side of the house. And so, I was. Uh, in large part to you, um, we were introduced to this space. If you recall, it was between this space and a space on Woodward, and we selected this space because of the historic qualities of, of the space. And it, um, shout out to you guys from having the foresight back then not to completely white box the space, but just to clean out the old bank infrastructure, but leave the rawness that exists yeah, still I mean, here today. It looks so beautiful in the way that you just kept the history and then you added to it. Um, this makes uh, this spot one of the best spots in town by far. Yeah, it's great. I mean, if, as you recall, I think Wright & Company, another tenant uh, of the family, uh, was probably, I would say, the first new restaurant coming downtown. It was. And then Jeremy went townhouse, and we came within a month or so of each other. Yeah. So we're coming upon our fourth year, uh, four-year anniversary, and so awesome. we hope you'll be here to celebrate with us because, of course, uh, you're a big part of it. Definitely. I mean, this is, like I said as I walked in, this is my go-to. Not only does your team welcome me with open arms and give me so much love, but the team in the back and the food here and the quality and just everything about it just gives me a good vibe, and, and that's why I love coming here. So the team is key. It's key. And the people are key. Absolutely. And you know, like, you know what fires me up more than anything is the city is created by the people. No and question. And the people of our city ha happen to be just unbelievably amazing. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, globally and, you know, especially, you know, in America, people don't know really like what's happening in Detroit and how great the people are. And raising a family here is, is incredible. It's Our incredible. city is awesome. And it's the people. When you talk about the people, right, there are the people that have come in to invest new, um, created job opportunities, created wealth opportunities, which are very important, equally as important. But equally as important to those people are the people that have been here. And so yes. when I think when you look at what people who are knowledgeable about what's happening in Detroit now, what they love about Detroit is they've got pioneers, new pioneers, you know, such as the family of companies um, led by Dan, yourself, and others, uh, right next door to people like Burt down at Burt's Marketplace, yeah. and Greg's Pizza on Livernoise, and Red's Jazz Shoe Shine on Oakland. Yeah. Businesses that have been in the neighborhoods for decades that are still here. And so when you take Central that's brand new, you take a high-end prime and proper, you take Shinola, but then you also take Traffic Jam and Burt's and El Barzone, and you put it all together, that's a very uniquely Detroit experience where you can get the old and the new. You can go listen to Larry Mongo who can tell you stories from decades ago during Coleman Young's era. Then you can meet Detroit Bruce who has a celebrity in town every week, every day almost, talking about what those celebrities' impressions are about Detroit. And so yeah. your ambassadorship, as you will, is so important because nothing changes people's impressions about Detroit more than coming here. Yeah, you can you read the New York the Times, you can watch a 60 Minute special, but until you come here, put your feet on the ground, walk the streets and see it for yourself. And so the work that you and your team are doing is just incredible. You know what, it's a, it's, it takes an army, it's a group effort, it's everybody in this together. And again, that's one of the most beautiful things about the city. And you know, there, there's still this semi disconnect of like, is downtown for me or you know should i still be um you know just trying to figure out what's happening in my neighborhood and really the goal is to bring it all together because yes downtown is the heartbeat and the blood is pumping here 
But the goal is to push it out into the neighborhoods and create jobs and expose the opportunity to kids and, and really give everybody an opportunity to do their thing and be creative and, and be entrepreneurs like you. Yeah, you know, I think that it's interesting. I don't think there has, has been a single um, administration from a city leadership standpoint that hasn't grappled with development downtown versus development in neighborhoods. And I think that any historian will tell you that in order to get a city to come back and be vibrant, the core has to be vibrant first. You cannot go, I don't think, to another major urban city where their central business district is not thriving, but the neighborhoods are. Yeah. Because the, the um, sense of it can work um, comes from downtown. It does. Then once people have the impression, hey, I see it working, I see the investment working, two things are gonna happen. A, that's just gonna, people are gonna piggyback. I mean, you've seen it with what Dan has done. I mean, Mike Illich did it before that. But Dan, you guys came down here, you took the risk. Yeah, you got some great deals on properties, but you took the risk. Now people are following you. And so what's happening now is entrepreneurs are saying, all right, I'm confident now in Detroit. I have investor confidence but now I'm priced out of downtown. So what that does is forces the, the ring out. Exactly. And so it goes into Jefferson Chalmers and the North End and beyond Corktown in the Southwest. Exactly. It goes to Northwest Detroit because all those neighborhoods need the same things. They do. You know, if people live in the suburbs, you got drugstores, cleaners, coffee shops, everything that you can either walk to or it's a two minute drive. The people in the city want the same thing. So when you go to Rosedale Park, you go to Palmer Woods, University District, there are not as many of those opportunities. So I tell people all the time, they come and ask me, hey, where should I look to place my dough if I'm looking to invest in Detroit? I tell them, take it to the neighborhoods. People yeah. are hungry and thirsty for new opportunity. Yeah, it's gotta be on the fringe, you know. Everybody um, thinks like, if you're not downtown, you're out of the game. But really, like when you're on the fringe, those are where the opportunities are in the up and coming neighborhoods that need these amenities and the people are asking for them and then they can be um, leaders in those communities right. to run these businesses and it's a beautiful thing. You know, speaking of politics, because you have you know deep roots in your family, your dad was the mayor of the city. Yep. Um, you know, in my life, I have never seen the city come together in a political way with the community leaders, with the residents of our city and the business leaders really making it happen. And if it, if it doesn't happen like that, it doesn't happen at all. You got to collaborate or things don't work. Living in a silo doesn't work. No, I mean, I think if you look at, again, if you look historically at Detroit, when Detroit has thrived the most, it's been when there's been complete alignment. I think Detroit going into bankruptcy First of all, I think the decision to do that by Kevin Orr and the governor was the right thing. There are some people that challenge that political policy mindset. Um, but a lot of the things that we accomplished through bankruptcy, particularly working with the unions, we could have not done outside of bankruptcy. But having said that, bottoming out, if you consider bankruptcy bottoming out, that bottoming out caused everyone to be in line. Philanthropy, entrepreneurs, civic leaders, um, the politicians, big business, all were aligned. Everybody played a role. You either gave something up, you wrote a check, you volunteered, but everybody got in line. And I think for the most part, now being several years out of bankruptcy, that alignment still exists. And I think as long as the leadership, business and political, can continue that alignment, I think that we have a long path ahead of us. We do, and the city is so massive that there's so much more to do. You know, we're in a small downtown piece of the city, right. but um, the, you know, the opportunities outside of downtown are, are huge. Yeah, I don't think people realize. I mean, Detroit's 139 square miles, and what we refer to as a greater downtown area is 7.2 square miles. Exactly. So whatever that math is, you got 131, 132 square miles left right for investment. We've got land, we've got a great workforce, um, and we've got, a, again, we've got a hungry base of residents that want city services and goods to be in their neighborhood. You know, that being said, like, so you, you're into several businesses, you own Central Kitchen and Bar, which is amazing, but you gotta have some other things up your sleeve. So we're gonna acquire properties and we're going to populate 
um, those properties ourselves. So we'll yeah. be moving our corporate offices into there. And I think you're going to see next spring a couple more hospitality concepts awesome. coming from us over in the Harmony Park area. We are building a 213-unit uh, apartment building on Jefferson on top of a Meyer. Uh, operated grocer, 40, okay. uh, 43,000 yeah. square foot. East foot. Jefferson. Yep, East Jefferson, just east of 75. Yeah. So that construction will start um, when the weather breaks next year, probably April, May-ish. That's awesome. And, you know, I got to tell you, um, people appreciate it, you know, and though not everybody tells everybody how much they appreciate each other, you know, it's a known thing right. that the love for each other is there without even saying it. Right. And, uh, it's like a family. It is like a family. And, you know, that is one of the best things about this city. It goes back to the people. Right. You know, the fortunate thing is we have you here as a Detroiter and as a leader in many different ways. And any way that you can help the city is a benefit, whether you're running for mayor, whether you're mayor, whether you're an entrepreneur, an outside businessman or, you know, influencer in the neighborhoods. And, you know, we, we all just appreciate you, and that's why I wanted to have you here. Let the city know how great of a guy you are. Thank you. I appreciate it. Detroit Bruce, y'all. Let's go. Rock Boogie Productions. Cheers. Cheers. My man.